Today we're going to talk about the four different mounting methods of a ball bearing. And we say a ball bearing, mounted bearing, meaning the bearing insert in the housing being mounted. So typically this is how you re receive the unit. They're assembled all here in Charlotte. But to go through the four methods, let's just review them. So this would be a ball bearing insert with set screws, probably the most common and recognized shaft attachment method in the industry. Equally as common, though, is one with an eccentric locking collar. So two matching eccentrics, when twisted into place, will lock the bearing to the shaft. A third one, and probably a little more refined, is a concentric collar. So tangs on the extended inner ring of the bearing would lock down in a concentric manner when the locking collar is tightened in place. This would give a slightly more balanced effect for the shaft in the bearing, maybe more ideal for higher speed applications. And the fourth mounting method is using a tapered adapter sleeve, and it will come assembled as you receive it, but it consists of a tapered adapter, and then a locking washer, and a locking nut, and all this can be assembled then onto the shaft, and as this adapter is tightened, it will grip the shaft in the most concentric manner. So sort of in looking at all four styles, the first two being the most common and found and easiest to assemble, the third one being a concentric grip to the shaft, and the fourth an adapter type that is almost a perfect fit to the shaft because it conforms ideally. There are no other shaft attachment methods and other than a shrink fit to the shaft, but these four you will find very common, and there is a price difference between all of them. The beginning two are probably the most cost effective, where the last two are gonna be a little bit more just because of additional hardware, and they do take a little bit more time to install, but there are some added benefits as a result. So the first mounting style is a set screw mounted ball bearing where it's a slip fit to the shaft and it would tighten to the shaft using the two set screws. So once the bearing is positioned in place, the flange bolted to the frame of the equipment, the set screws can be locked down. So with an Allen wrench, and typically you could use a torque wrench, and each set screw then is tightened and secured in place. There are instructions in the manual on how tight to tighten each set screw. And as a guide, after 24 hours of operation, it would be a good idea to go back and retighten each of the set screws to make sure they're secured into position. A second attachment method is using an eccentric locking collar. So a matching eccentric on both the bearing and the collar, and it's twisted into place during tightening, locking the bearing to the shaft. So a slip fit on the shaft, the flange is bolted to the frame of the equipment, and then the locking collar can be positioned into place. And once the eccentrics lock up, then you can take the blind hole that's in the collar and use it as a location for a drift and hammer in order to tighten the collar in the direction of rotation. So that's an important aspect to get the collar tight. It needs to be tightened with rotation. If it's tightened against the rotation, the collar could come loose. And then finally, during the tightening, the set screw can be tightened to the shaft. And in the manual, there's a chart giving you tightening torques for each of the set screws. A third method of attaching a bearing to the shaft is a concentric locking collar. The inner ring has tangs that will clamp down in a uniform fashion when the collar is tightened into position. A slip fit on the shaft, once the bearing is positioned and it bolted to the frame of the equipment, the locking collar can be tightened using an Allen wrench and oftentimes a torque wrench would be advised to get the locking torque to the right level. And after 24 hours of operation, it just would be prudent to go back and just double check that it stayed tight. The last of the four mounting methods is by means of a tapered adapter and this would come assembled as you would receive the unit 
but just so you can see the assembly, the adapter can be positioned in place. There's a lock washer which becomes the locking mechanism once it's installed, and then the locking nut which is going to help to draw the adapter through the inner ring of the bearing as it tightens and clamps to the shaft. So this also is a slip fit to the shaft. Once it's positioned in place, the flange then bolted to the frame of the equipment. The adjusting nut can be tightened up and as this is tightened, it will draw the adapter through the bearing, clamping down on the shaft. The preferred method is to take a spanner wrench and in the grooves provided in the locking nut, this wrench can be used to tighten the bearing onto the shaft. As it gets tighter, a little hammer action on the end might help get it snug. The manual would give the degrees of rotation on how tight to tighten the nut. What not to do is to take a hammer and drift and use that to beat uh, the nut on. It's just not advisable to have hammers around bearings if you can avoid it. Each assembly comes with an instruction manual, gives the assembly method for each style, and included is the torque ratings for all of the set screws or the rotation required in order to lock the lock nut on the adapter type. Included is also a lubrication guide, so whether it's speed related or temperature or weather conditions or environment, all kind of suggestions are given here on the frequency of lubrication. On lubrication, it's really best judgment that plays the role. Typically, an application may be every three or four months, but your best judgment, a little bit of grease weeping at the seals is the best method. Um, a bearing will only retain as much grease as it wants, so you can't really control that, but you can control the amount of grease and the frequency of grease. So, a little bit at, infre at frequent intervals is better than a lot at infrequent intervals. You have to make the judgment there, but knowing your bearing is important. Just make sure to regrease them periodically.